I come from a long line of New England Puritans, and I have some fairly conservative attitudes about sex. So when I found out that my son was making porn films, I was disgusted by it. Sex works for me. People want it. Yeah. Is that what led me to this? No, what led me to this is the fact that I'm a wanderer and I'll take whatever job is there. But yeah, I've always not... All right, to be honest, I've always wanted to work in porn. Haven't you? I don't give a damn about my reputation. Me and family don't uh, gel very well. Uh, never really connected with anyone. And if I did, the one person I connected with is Art. Not my biological father, not my stepfather, not any relation to me. Um, but in my heart, he's my dad. I met Cole when he was four years old and I got together with his mother. I fell in love with Cole and his sister Manjeet almost immediately. My relationship with my own father had not been that good. He was a minister and professor of religion and somewhat stern and judgmental. So I was very conscious of wanting to do it differently. I wanted to be a better father to my kids. So. When I broke up with Kathy and uh, left the home, I made it a point to see the kids on a pretty regular basis. And Cole even lived with me some of the time. But uh, he'd had a rocky start in life and he was always an unhappy kid. Eventually he left school, he never did graduate. Moved down to Los Angeles and then he moved over to Europe. We kept in touch. He'd call sometimes despondent he was broken up with a girl or something like that. He was near suicidal. It, it frightened me. The last time I saw him was four years ago at his mother's funeral. Five years ago, Cole revealed a secret that he'd kept for decades. Not long after I left the family, he'd been sexually abused by an older man. I was horrified to learn this. At the same time, I realized that maybe I had a key to why he was so miserable. I've spoken to a psychologist about this, this link between the pornography and the abuse. I want Cole to see that link. And I'm off to Prague. It's always been my fear to like sit down and actually stay somewhere. I just don't feel comfortable being in one place for longer than six months. And so like the last year and a half has been great. You know, I've spent a couple of weeks in Budapest, come up here for a few weeks. When I get tired of work, I go back to my girlfriend. When I get tired of her, I come back here, go to Berlin, go to Serbia, spend a few weeks there, never get bored of anywhere. 
To be honest, I don't like porn. Never bought porn, never enjoyed porn. Don't appreciate porn, don't like the people who buy porn, don't like most of the people who make the porn. But, I like a good story. And a good story to tell people is, I'm one of the few people I know who has had sex in a brothel and been paid for it. That's a good story. Oh, yeah, something to be proud of. Everyone always goes on about the, the porn stuff, but I've done so much more than well, just I, the porn. And like, look at this, for the last, what, 15 years, you basically left me alone. You know, now that I work in porn, now you make a documentary about my life? Fuck you. Yeah, we're right around the corner wondering if we can stop in. All right, sweet. Then uh, we should be there in about 15 minutes. All right, cool. Ciao. That's the famous bastion. That is. You can get even closer, Cole. That's the focus. Because she has a bra now, you can actually start taking your shirt off. And she can take jeans off also already. She can touch her bum. She can touch her bum, yeah. Uh, we'll start this standing up for one minute, and then doggy again, and then. Uh, I would, I would go right now, but now you can go a bit, a bit more kinky position-wise before she takes it off. I would actually start in something like this, just with a fantasy fancy or anything, and she can start playing around. So I'm gonna look here and just. So like stay facing because the light is gonna hit off here and makes it look very nice. the debate that you would never ever do porn. Yeah, never, and ever, I have so much. never ever. Sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> she was like a business manager or office yeah. manager for a whorehouse. And yeah. So I had also run a job. <laughs> 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 yeah, I never bought a porn. Me too, not. I, never I had saw. one. Someone gave me one once. I never bought one either. But we decided ourselves to be in this business, so we're doing this. Now I said, we don't hurt anybody, we don't kill anybody, we, do, we don't do nothing illegal, we don't do nothing which disturbs other minds, because it, 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 it's only about people decision. You want to watch it, or you don't want to watch it. You want to do it, or you don't want to do it. Nobody's pressed for anything. Everybody decides themselves, so why people have a problem that it exists if it's only about their decision to watch it. People want more and more and you get to nastier and nastier and then you get to that stuff that you guys choose not to shoot but people get to the point where that's what they want because what started out as maybe a naked girl in a Playboy magazine then becomes a naked girl with her crotch showing and then becomes a screw scene and then becomes bestiality or bondage or whatever and this apparently is a, a fairly common phenomenon f from what studies have been done that people they become bored quickly with it the people who work in porn especially in Eastern Europe it's a quick and easy way to make cash and feel comfortable it's, it, it's the people who buy the porn that I have a problem with and you know, it's the people who buy the guns that I have a problem with. It's not the people who make the guns. You know, people only make the guns because people are going to buy them. People only make the porn because people's going to buy it. There are always those ar arguments, kids could see what you do. Of course could, and kids could see what you do, but only if the parents don't watch out. And the fact that parents these days don't watch out for their children anymore doesn't legalize the fact that people are going after porn producers for the reason that children might see it. And bottom line, the problem is the Canadian family or the American family or the German family that 
basically gives up on actually taking care of their children and expects the courts to do it, expects the, you know, the, 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 the lawmakers to make laws to stop this from happening. No, the fucking parents have to take care of the children because that's their fucking job. That's why if they don't children. take care of their children, they're not doing their fucking job and they should be smacked upside the head. Well, basically, I was, uh, I, I started riding the bus, hanging out in the streets. I guess it was about nine. My dad went his way and my mom took care of me, so to speak. I used to go to the library all the time. And uh, around the corner from the library was this little convenience store. And uh, yeah, I, I used to go in and the guy was really nice. And, you know, he gave me candy and uh, let me look at the naughty books, and then uh, took me into the back. And it disturbs me that I went back a few times. But, uh, hey, you know, we all need love on whatever sick fucking level that is. I remember the change when he changed from being a very quiet, introverted, almost needy person to a very angry, dark person who, you know, basically cut off family. And, and I didn't know why, I just saw the results and I saw the anger, I saw the, the outbursts and you know, I, I had my own stuff to deal with so I just created a distance. I thought I was doing a pretty good job of maintaining the relationship after I left. So when I learned about the abuse, I, uh, and I realized that it was happened shortly after I left, I, I felt horrible. It was uh, pretty devastating to realize that I hadn't been the father I wanted to be. I've been carrying around the guilt ever since. First time I tried, it was for money, and I was curious about this business. And now I think I like it. <laughs> I like work with another people, with with girls, and I like to show my body. No, nobody know that I do this work. Only my friends. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I have a boyfriend. One boyfriend? Yeah, just one boyfriend. This is videos, this is uh, soft, pink, what I do it. This I do it, this no. It uh, is just work. It's just work. No, private. This is just work. I'm constantly getting an education here when I'm on these sets. You have this image in your mind of girls who are sluts and what you say, girls who spread their legs for the camera. There she is, some kind of a sweet person. She kind of uh, seems like a pretty nice person, kind of a normal person. So uh, kind of reassess just what this is all about sometimes. Got my test back. Just like my personality. Yeah, if you go for a normal job, like uh, 20 days a month from 8 o'clock until 5, you will never make this money, like in modeling or something. So it's still better. But also then you give back that things that you lost privacy, you gave something what you will cannot take back. Why do I do porn? Because it pisses people off, because it shocks people, because it amazes people, same reason. You know, I do, I do most of the things I do. 
to, to create a response, whether it's a positive response, a negative response, whether you're laughing, you're crying, you're pointing at me, you're yelling at me, you're hugging me, you know, just trying to make people feel. If I can have an effect on somebody, then I've done my job and I've lived my life. Why can't he make it in an industry that is not degrading towards women? Because that industry, as a woman in Canadian society, as a mother of two young girls, as a daughter of a successful woman, that is not an area that I am uncomfortable, I don't think is the right word. It's not an area that I am proud of. And that's, and I can't be proud of someone supporting that industry that, in an industry that I don't believe is, has a positive influence on society. And that's my value. The funny thing about Cole and me is, I know Cole wouldn't be here if it wouldn't, if it wouldn't be because of me. For him, it's more about friendship and achieving something together than just working. For me, is more an anchor and a person to talk to when it comes down to creative decisions and help how things have to run on set and stuff like this than a pure worker. My work wouldn't, wouldn't really work out if I didn't have Cole. And uh, from the other side, it's the same that Cole wouldn't be here doing it if, if I wasn't here. So it's actually our friendship which holds this whole thing together. I understand Cole's anger and the only thing I can do for him as friend is, is to try to take it away. He doesn't care about himself really. I try to talk to him to find ways which, which make him feel uh, more worthy than he feels himself. But it's very hard to do. It's very hard to do. There's no excuse for whatever happened. You know, there's no fault, no blame, but at some point you have to take ownership of what your role or what the effect it's doing on your life, and you either deal with it or get on with it. You know, just letting it affect yourself forever is just, you're almost perpetuating the, the occurrence and you're letting it take over yourself. So, it sucks, but shit happens. Basically, I think you're lying to me and I think you're lying to yourself. About what? About who you are and what drives you. Nothing really drives me. Well, I think that's part of the deal. I, what I remember is the little needy kid, the four-year-old who climbed to my lap as, almost as soon as he saw me because he needed something. And I responded to that because I needed something too. I know the sensitive little boy who needed so much that he wound up in the hands of a predator like that. I feel guilty about the time when, because that happened not long after I broke up with your mother. That makes me feel horrible that I wasn't there to protect you. It wasn't your job. Yeah, it was my job. I took that job on. I want to keep it. I know that because I wasn't there. But you just go into this dismissive mode. Well, not your job, not this. Don't you, know, you just carry on with the big, the big wall and the moat here. Look at what my experiences were. As I was born, my parents are broken up, and then you know you came along, and then five years later that disappeared, and then. Both you and she went through a string of relationships. Finally, you found someone. She doesn't even like me. My mother stayed with a guy who was married and had children for the, for the rest of her life. The last time I saw her alive, she only wanted to see me for like two hours in London, where I flew from Switzerland. These are my models. And that was the last time I saw her alive. Mom was very devoted to her job. I just seen that her job consumed her and that, you know, her family took a back seat. But actually since having kids and having to think about putting, you know, if I was in her position as a single mom 
coming from a very difficult divorce, getting no support, financial or otherwise, I could see why the job would be very important because you don't have a paycheck, you don't have a roof, you don't have food on the table. As a child, looking back, you always wish that you had been more of a, been more of a priority. I went over there really concerned about the pornography, but uh, I came away more concerned about his psyche. He has pretty terrible attitudes about women. To quote him, pardon the language, he says, you know, I don't fuck my friends and I'm not friends with the people I fuck. I mean, how is he ever going to establish some kind of a positive relationship with anybody in this world if he has that attitude? I arrived in Prague this afternoon to find a note from Cole inviting me to shoot of his new script, The Sexual Adventures of Little Red. After uh, settling into the sort of surreal aspect of this scene that we'd walked into, I began to focus on what Cole was doing. And he's taken on a multitude of roles in this production, but he's acting as sort of assistant director and production manager, one of the people in the gas mask. They were short some extras, so he was doing that. And he wrote the script. Okay, let's go. Position. Coming into that scene, your first reaction is, oh, Lord, what are we doing here? But you do become very acclimatized very quickly. It's just something that's happening in front of you. You lose any sense that you're invading somebody's privacy. I think that's part of how you acclimatize to this, because it isn't a private moment. It's just a rude moment in front of a camera. It's been kind of frustrating. I really looking forward to spending some time with Cole and uh, tapping into his feelings and what's happened since we were here a few months ago. Try to understand whether there's been any change in his life, whether the what I'm seeing of this young man who's really hitting the marks here as uh, within his work, if there's anything going on in his psyche. Hello, Cole. Yep. We're here. Hey, Dad. <laughs> you out of bed? Yeah, yeah, I've been out of bed for a while. <laughs> what am I gonna do with that? Shave my mohawk off. Shave your mohawk off? You ready? I figure every father wants to do that. Hey. And it's my gift to you. <laughs> I thank you. All right. You can press harder. This is gonna be one crappy looking haircut. <laughs> Let's see, let me see if I can get the neck a little better here. Okay, now we've had the symbolic moment. What, what's it all mean? <laughs> well, if, if you don't understand, then the whole point's lost. Well, I mean, does this mean you're turning over a new leaf? What does it mean? No. It's 
Just my gift to you. Oh, okay. All right. Then I appreciate it as a gift to me. <laughs> uh, too. So it go underneath this part? Okay. See the difference between long and short? The short goes, the long stays. All right. But it's not good enough? When he sees her, when he sees her head turning around the corner, because she could do this, like. This is the one that is the one that is the one that is the one that is the time that we're talking on camera, even off camera, it's just been trying to justify who I am or what I do or what I believe. And I may have a skewed vision of family, but I, I think a family should stick together, like to, to be with your family member, no matter who they are or what they do, you know, unless they're you know, an ax murderer or an arsonist or something. But, Having to justify who I am is, to my father, is just grating. It's exhausting. I'm tough. I'm tough spiritually. I'm tough mentally. Tough physically. And do you have a problem with that? Imagine. You say go see a psychologist. You say, you know, try to work it out. Imagine walking barefoot for two months. Imagine walking barefoot for 20 years. You're going to build calluses. Yes. And you can take those calluses off. You can put cream on your feet. But oh, you know what? You still walked around for 20 years barefoot. And the other thing, mm -hmm. the reason I'm tough is because everything's been a fucking battle. I know that. I know that. Even to this day. What's what's today like for you? What's today I'm just fucking exhausted. I'm working on this fucking movie 15 hours a day. And then I come to do this shit. I used to call you crying suicidal, and you used to be there. Yes. <laughs> I hope I still am. I know, I remember those times. And this whole thing has just been a fucking challenge. And that's why I like people like Bushy, that's why I like people like Bastion. Because they're my family. Mm hmm Yes. They accept, accept me no matter what. If I want a fucking challenge, I'll walk out of the fucking street. Okay, but what do I do? Do I just watch you being unhappy and not say anything? What are you saying? I'm saying I wish you were happier. I think there are ways you could make yourself happier. That's basically in two sentences what I'm saying with any of these things. Well, it's, it's very vague. I, I, I don't need pills. I don't need solutions. I don't need doctors. I need people around me. You have some of those things around you. My mom you. hated good. me. My sister hates me. You're fucking challenging me. You wonder why I don't want a piece of my family I made my own family. All right. And you're the only one. I'm trying to suggest things to you. If that's, if you don't, just don't want those suggestions, then I'll just shut up. 
I'm still here, which either way, and I will be still here, either way. I guess be here, say, I love you, son, and I do. So I'm sorry if I've been handling this badly. I, as they say, I, I should know better, just from my own experience with my own father. And I also know that he did it out of love for me, even if it was poorly expressed, and I'm doing it out of love for you. Put those goddamn spikes in. <laughs> doing this, but I'm giving you another chance. Start moving. And this time, failure is not an option. I think you need to gesticulate. People tend to gesticulate when they're trying to get this a point time, across. Yes. Failure is not an option. Correct. Maybe if that were a big dildo. Forget that it's a porn already. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm giving you one last chance. And this time, failure is not an option. If you actually get nominated for, for a porn award, will you show up? <laughs> Somehow, I don't see that happening. Kind of a cool breeze rolling up this hill. Is it like a sweater? No, I've got another layer if I need it. I wanted to talk to you about Ottawa. I was wondering what you want to do. I've been in touch with a detective agency in, in Ottawa. I've been in touch with the police in Ottawa. Um, actually, I need to send the police an email. I have their, I have an email address for someone who's in charge of sexual assault crimes. And do you want to, are you willing to try to do something, track this guy down. I mean, even if the police just showed up at his door, scared the bejesus out of him, I mean, if nothing else, even if they couldn't get a conviction or anything else, he'd uh, certainly do some sweating. I mean, it's up to you whether you want to do something like this or not. I'm trying to lay the groundwork. As I say, I've talked to the police, I've talked to the detective agency. If you want to, then let's do something. <coughs> <clears throat> be a good chance to do something. If you don't, then we won't. But uh, I believe, and you know, I've told you that I've been talking to this psychologist several times about what I'm doing and what, what we're doing, what uh, the possibilities of it might be. And one of the things that she suggests is you know, this could be a, a healthy thing for you to challenge this. I mean, you carry around a huge amount of anger about the past, and are you just going to carry it around, or are you going to deal with it? If you think it'll help, you know. Well, you, I... You're my father, I respect you. Well... From, I'm looking for direction in my life. Oh, okay. Just been waiting 25 years. Go west, years. young man. Go west to Ottawa, and let's go and confront this issue. That way. Well, screw whatever West is. I'm just making a gesture. Was that tree there the whole time? No. No, that tree is new. And the kitchen is right at the front. Yeah, yeah, that was Jeet's room, kitchen. Well, that was where I set up my office. And that's where I threw the cat down the stairs. To see if it would land on its feet. And then I threw your typewriter down the stairs to see if it would land face up too. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that particular moment. That was the only time you hit me. 
<laughs> pissed me off. <laughs> so how soon after did I start calling you dad? I don't know. Fairly quickly. Your sister held out for a while. I, I have a very fond memory of coming home from work one day. It was when we still lived in the, the small house over here before we moved it up the hill. And she was waiting on the steps. And she sort of very shyly said, Hi, Daddy. I was completely spent. <laughs> so did you ever think I'd end up the way I did? Well, I don't think it's an end. <laughs> Just where you are now. I think in many ways your presence was a bit of a godsend in our life. How do I say it? <laughs> it was, uh, I don't know where we'd be without you. You were, uh, you know, you were great. You are great. Um, you helped us as a family gel and uh, just get over a very difficult time. And uh, all of us, including mom, needed that. Okay, so I guess my involvement at this point is to help you track down this individual who 20 some odd years ago had uh, assaulted you. Is that correct? My understanding is correct there? It seems that way. Okay. It was mid to late 40s, Middle Eastern, somewhat balding, relatively thin, slimy. Just normally, kind of like him. After the incident, had you ever gone back to the store? Yeah, it was repeat. Okay, so this happened on more than one occasion. You know, based on the information that you were describing, you may not have been the only victim over the course of the period of time that this person had that convenience store. This may be someone who was already known to the police. And what's the point after 25 years? Well, I think that you're the only person who can answer that. I don't know if I want to find him. If I find him, personally, it's not going to be good news. If someone else finds him and he goes to a court case, I don't want to appear. I, you know, it's, it's already taken up enough of my mind that I don't want to relive it all over again for the enjoyment of the jury or whatever. And on top of that, have to come back here for that. I don't really trust the police. Well, how would you give them a chance? Just once, give them a chance. I, I gave them many chances. I got scars to prove it. Well, whoopee, but here's another face of the police that maybe you open the door, you'll discover there are people here who are human and on your side. I think you ought to make a statement. This is not a vacation. Uh, it's a big fucking stress ball. Uh, when we were going on about the whole sex abuse thing, uh, I found that my father wasn't exactly heartless about it, but just very desensitized. Like as we're going by the building where it happened, he's like, uh, yeah, is that the place? Is it 117 or 119? And I'm like, <sighs> Just 
And then, uh, yeah, you know, she's like, yeah, okay, we just want you to write up the report. You know, uh, I'll be down there in like 15 minutes. <laughs> you want me to fucking relive this thing and just hand it over in 15 minutes? I know that he's, he's not doing it, you know, to be an automaton. He's, he's doing what he's doing because he loves me and I think that he feels bad that he feels bad that this happened and that he couldn't do anything. And that he feels that this is what he can do. So he's doing what he thinks he can do. I, Kobe brought out that complaint, and then I went down to the uh, internet place and I typed it out and learned things I never knew before. And then, and then it was, uh, by the time I'd done some other email, it was getting late, so I didn't go down to the archives, but I decided I'd go and look in that store where uh, that's been identified. And oh, there was there was a woman in there, probably probably from the family, but between between writing out that complaint and sending it over to the police and going into that store, I just, I was vibrating. I was, by the time I got out of there, I was, hell, I'm glad Khalid doesn't know what about the place because I almost tore it apart. I'm just, I'm just furious. Uh, can't you express from your heart what you feel? Like, why do you feel it's so difficult to say that you love me? It wasn't until last night that you said you were proud that I was your son, that you loved me, that you put your arm around me, that you actually touched me. I have no memory of ever having been hugged by my father I, or until quite late by my mother. You know, it's just, it is not a part but of the house. By your son. Yes, I am, and I hug him. No, you don't have to stop. No, oh, I'm right. just going to think you're gay. <laughs> okay, all right. We can dance now. No, we can stand here and hug. All right. It's okay. Okay. I'm just going to wait for this tape to run out. Stop thinking about this tape. Stop thinking about being gay. Stop thinking about dancing. Think about me. Think about what I'm doing. All right. Long after I left the family, he'd been sexually abused by an older man. I was horrified to learn this, but at the same time I realized that maybe I had a key to why he was so miserable. I've spoken to a psychologist about this, this link between the pornography and the abuse. I want Cole to see that link, and I'm off to Prague.
It's always been my fear to like sit down and actually stay somewhere. Me and family don't uh, gel very well. Uh, never really connected with anyone. And if I did, the one person I connected with is Art. Not my biological father, not my stepfather, not any relation to me. Um, but in my heart, he's my dad. I met Cole when he was four years old and I got together with his mother. I fell in love with Cole and his sister Manjeet almost immediately. My relationship with my own father had not been that good. He was a minister and professor of religion and somewhat stern and judgmental. So I was very conscious of wanting to do it differently. I wanted to be a better father to my kids. So. When I broke up with Kathy and uh, left the home, I made it a point to see the kids on a pretty regular basis. And Cole even lived with me some of the time. But uh, he'd had a rocky start in life and he was always an unhappy kid. Eventually he left school, he never did graduate. Moved down to Los Angeles and then he moved over to Europe. We kept in touch. He'd call sometimes despondent he was broken up with a girl or something like that. He was near suicidal. It, it frightened me. The last time I saw him was four years ago at his mother's funeral. Five years ago, Cole revealed a secret that he'd kept for decades. Not long. I just don't feel comfortable being in one place for longer than six months. And so like the last year and a half has been great. You know, I've spent a couple of weeks in Budapest, come up here for a few weeks. When I get tired of work, I go back to my girlfriend. When I get tired of her, I come back here, go to Berlin, go to Serbia, spend a few weeks there, never get bored of anywhere. To be honest, I don't like porn. Never bought porn, never enjoyed porn. Don't appreciate porn, don't like people who buy porn, don't like most of the people who make the porn. But I like a good story. And a good story to tell people is I'm one of the few people I know who has had sex in a brothel and been paid for it. That's a good story. Oh, yeah, something to be proud of. Everyone always goes on about the, the porn stuff, but I've done so much more than well, just that's the what porn. I just said. And, like, look at this. For the last, what, 15 years, you basically left me alone. You know, now that I work in porn, now you make a documentary about my life? <laughs> I come from a long line of New England Puritans. I have some fairly conservative attitudes about sex. So when I found out that my son was making porn films, I was disgusted by it. Sex works for me. People want it. Yeah. Is that what led me to this? No, what led me to this is the fact that I'm a wanderer and I'll take whatever job is there. But yeah, I've always not... All right, to be honest, I've always wanted to work in porn. Haven't you? I don't give a damn about my 